But that's not the end of it. From that point on, every single sacrifice that was made on the ancient altars was not to forgive sins. People have this thing that Jewish people believe that by killing an animal you forgive sins. Never did the Jews say that theologically. I'm not saying there weren't Jews who thought that, but that's a misunderstanding. The sacrifice was your way of saying, God, please keep your word. This blood from the cow, the goat, the sheep, the pigeon, and the dove is our way of reminding you of your promise. Please do what you promised. Pay for our sins. And God was so serious about this that he said, Moses, now we're 400 years later, I want there to be services where I put my name, first in the tabernacle, then in the temple, every day at 9 and at 3. This is in Deuteronomy. And at 9 and at 3, every day, I want an animal to be killed for all Jews. So that no matter where you are in Israel or 1,000, 5,000 kilometers away, at that moment, you know God is being asked again, please keep your word. And Moses must have thought, but God, what if it's raining? Then you'll get wet. And what if it's snowing? If it's 9 and 3, then wear something warm. Holidays? Of course holidays. Sabbath? You bet Sabbath. Every single day at 9 and 3. Don't miss it. First they did it at the tabernacle. Then Solomon's temple. And by Jesus' day, this unbelievable construction that Herod built. Now by Jesus' day, this thing had evolved into a big deal. Five to nine, five to three, there's a priest by the altar, that's a model, but by the altar with an animal. There's another priest with a sundial. And another priest on the corner called the pinnacle corner of the temple with a shofar. And as the sundial, or on a dark day, the hourglass turned, the signal would be given. The priest would get the knife ready. And the man on the pinnacle would call, depending on how, what time of the year it was, thousands of people. But the sacrifice was at hand. whole city would fall silent. The priest would take his knife and cut the throat, catch the blood, throw it against the altar. Every single day at nine and at three. And other than the destruction of the temple for 70 years, this had been going on for 1,400 years. Now come with me. Jerusalem. There's two million people in town if Josephus is right. It's a high holy day. Unleavened bread. There's a priest at the altar. A priest at the hourglass. A priest on the pinnacle. The only difference from all other days is that just outside the western gate near an abandoned quarry were three men on crosses. And the middle one looked dead. And now it was three o'clock. came to silence.
And the text says, the man in the middle raised his head, looked up to his dad, and in the gagging, choking voice of a crucifixion victim, he screamed. It's finished! And he died at exactly three o'clock. Just the way his father promised. And when he screamed, it's finished, I don't think he meant his suffering only. I think he meant it's all finished, all the blood, all the death. I did it. Listen to me. Pictures matter. There are no words to tell you what you just learned. And if you or I and I miss the pictures, our faith is here and not here.